everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. And I have a very, very special guest with us this evening for Watt Talk Tuesday, and that's Claire Grant. She's a huge Wheel of Time fan, amongst another a bunch of other uh, fantasy and and geek type culture. Uh, and and she was very gracious to come on the channel and talk a little bit about Wheel of Time with me. So I'm really happy about that. So so Claire, why don't you tell the folks at home? Um, I mean, everybody should know who you are. Who's watching the channel? If you don't, just unsub right now. But uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, why don't you let them know who you are? Um, hi, I'm Claire Grant. I'm a actor and producer and writer and super nerd and gamer. And um, I guess uh, I think in the the nerd world, I think people would probably most most know me for. Um, I played a bounty hunter in Star Wars, the Clone Wars named Lats Ratsy. And that's pretty, I mean, that made my little nerd heart happy. Um, <laughs> I produced a web series called Team Unicorn that was literally just a celebration of all of the different, uh, well, some of the different nerd genres that, you know, are out there. And, um, I also created a little, uh, lightsaber duo trilogy um called saber and yeah um i do lots of indie movies and um some tv acting if i'm lucky um yeah i got a movie coming up um soon i think i don't know it's an editing who knows with these things but it's called uh the private eye it's my next project i got very cool <laughs> we'll, we'll have to watch that now i i think i first really recognized who you were in hulk and the agents of smash i guess is, is the best it's the best thing because <laughs> oh no i got to be titania it was yes. so amazing it made me so happy i'm loving seeing her in real life on she hulk it's it just oh, it makes me happy i i i i'm really impressed with how they did she hulk and i'm really impressed with seeing seeing titania on there because i'm a huge fan of the good place and of course seeing that actress again as as titania makes me makes me super happy although it would have been nice if you could have played it too <laughs> oh i you know um i'm i love her as an actress and i think she i also loved the good place and so um when once i saw what they were doing with the character itself i totally understood right away why they would want that actor. What's her name again? I'm really bad at names of actors. Do you know what her name is? Jamila, I follow her. Jamila I, I Jamil. Google. Jamila yes, Jamil. That is her yeah. name. Jamila Jamil. She's wonderful. I loved her so much on The Good Place. So especially after this last episode, the most recent, spoiler alert, it was like a Titania episode and it was so it was great. So good. And honestly, it was. And it kind of felt like Titania, this version of Titania that they've created is just a shade of the character that Jamila Jamil was playing on The Good Place. Oh, it's and perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Happy for that. <laughs> That's right. So so uh, speaking of spoiler warning, we're going to have you a spoiler warning for the rest of the video because we're going to talk about Wheel of Time and we're going to ruin a bunch of stuff from the book series uh, all the way up through, including the end. So spoiler warning, if you have not read Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson's The Wheel of Time series, that's everything from New Spring, the prequel book, all the way up to including A Memory of Light, book 14. And if you haven't watched the show on Prime Video, that's episodes one through eight of season one, before Warren, we're going to ruin plot points, character arcs, and all kinds of stuff from both of those mediums. Um, so yeah, so now that the spoiler warning's out of the way, Bella dies, just just so everybody knows. Um... <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I do that all the time, and people hate me for it, but it's so much fun. I gave them the spoiler warning, so if if you didn't click away before that, that's it's it's your own fault, folks. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so so the wheel of time um everybody seems to have their own story about how they picked up the book series and and how it affected them um people who watch my channel know a lot about my story and and and, and how it affected my younger life and my adult life as well but when did you first find the series and gravitate towards it it was in college and i believe it was um, uh, my, which, which for me was the late nineties and early two mm thousands. -hmm. And, um, I think I was 21, I think I was 21 and I had been reading 
uh, whatever Harry Potter books had just come out. There were only like three or four of them at the time, but I had been reading them mm-hmm. like ex- like over and over and over and over again. And my, you know, you've always got the friends in your life who read books like you read yeah. books. Not everybody reads books all the time, you know, or the same kind of books. But hopefully everyone has like their little group of book people that are mm-hmm. like-minded. And so my little book, uh, book people were like, you have to stop reading Harry Potter. Like you can't do it anymore. Like we have to, we, you have to move on. And they both kept trying to get me to read Wheel of Time. And I just, I just sat on it because I was just, just didn't want to leave the world of Harry Potter, honestly, if I'm being honest. And, mm-hmm. um, and then but I had been gifted by my friend, Joe. She, she gifted me the first three books in paperback. And she was like, always buy these books three at a time. And I didn't really understand at the moment what she meant, but really it's because you read them so fast that if you don't yeah. have the next one on hand, you're going to be really regretful. Cause like how, like you don't want to wait to see what happens next. Um, and so uh, I don't remember what I was. Oh, I do remember. I, I remember I was, going to go visit my ex-boyfriend's parents in like Arkansas or something like that. And I was really unhappy about it. And I was like, I brought the book. And I was like, maybe I'll just try this book, you know, just try it. And I didn't bring a Harry Potter book. So I, I read it. And by the time I got to page 70, which is the magic number that I tell everyone that I give these books to. And I'm like, you're going to love these books. Just make it to page 70. Mm-hmm. Every, like, it doesn't stop. You get to page 70 and then it doesn't stop from there until it's done. Um, and that's, that's what happened. I was trapped in a car and all of a sudden I, I didn't want to leave. I was just, that was it. And I didn't stop until I was done reading those until I was done reading them. And then I think oh, yeah. when I was done, I immediately started reading them again. Oh, uh, I've, I've read them. I, I don't know if you're aware, but I've read the entire series 70 plus times. I'm, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a nerd. So <laughs> I, I've read them three times all the way through, maybe four. I, or not, not four all the way through. Like I've started and stopped several of them, but I thought that that was a lot, but 40 is a lot. I'm so, that's 70, impressive. You read seven, seven, zero. How do you read that much? Uh, consistently. No. I can finish, I can finish one of the novels in a day. So, um, when I was younger, it was it was an escape. It was it was what I did. I didn't have a great life growing up, so I read the books and I liked them. Uh, I had been reading Ari Salvador before that, and I read some. Uh, eventually, read the Harry Potter books and and a few other like Terry Pratchett and and other fantasy authors. But when I when I picked up The Eye of the World in December of ninety, so it would have been just after Christmas. Yeah, um, yes, you get ten whole years on me to read these books. As my, I get it now. I get it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, in, in, in my adult life, my job, I go away a lot. I travel uh, a, a whole lot for it. So I miss my family, miss miss people around here. So I bring the books with me because they're like family too. And I have my iPad or whatever with me. And I just read them on repeat. And it's it's comforting and nice and uh, a little weird. I will admit that, I guess. But uh, I literally just told you that I had a friend intervention to get me to stop reading <laughs> Harry Potter books repeatedly. There you go. So... So I, I, you mentioned that you had to buy them in threes because you can't wait. And I remember finishing the first book and going, is there more? And at that point, we didn't know. And waiting a year or two in between each book was oh, absolute yeah. torture. And, and nobody has to do that now, thankfully, uh, because the series is complete. But at the time, it was bad. It was real bad. But what happened was every time a new book came out, I just reread them. And then once the full series is out, you just start over and, and you get it all in one chunk. And it was it was pretty satisfying and comforting. So when you read them the first time, because I, I don't know about you, but every time I read them, my main character, my favorite character always seems to shift and change. If you had to pick one character out of the entire series, which one would be your absolute favorite right now? Just one. <laughs> just just from the books though right we'll, we'll go books we'll talk about the show in a bit you've seen the show obviously um but we'll talk I... just books <laughs> 2782 named characters you just pick one it's fine it's easy <laughs> i would always i mean i think i'm gonna go i think i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with uh a queen a queen a queen 
Yeah. Egwene, yeah, great choice. She she's a fantastic character. You, why though? Like, what what would make you choose her? I thought her arc was um, just like incredible. I thought her journey was incredible. I thought her um, the way that she found her her power and her strength both early on in captivity and then later when she was with um uh when she was with the Aiel, you know in the mm -hmm. in the wasteland it's the wasteland right my brain is yeah, yeah um, the waste yeah is right now um and uh and so like i and then and then when she and then when she like you know she saved the the I said I. She brought everyone together. She like healed. She helped to heal Rand. She did like like his heart, you know. Um, she did like she in she she gave herself for everyone. And I sometimes like I just remember like my memories of reading mm -hmm. her standing on the top of that tower for the first time, just like bringing destruction around and like saving everyone and sacrificing herself. And it was just like such a strong, um, memory for me. And, um, I just, you know, like what a powerful journey she had, you know, she, she's definitely top five for my, for my favorite characters. Um, I would, I would say definitely way above Rand. I, I don't like Rand very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I I do I like Rand a lot. I like him so much. I feel so bad for him. Um, <clears throat> but uh, he, he went through a lot. But he was still a dick for a very long time. <laughs> he was, but he yeah. thought he had to be. That's true. <laughs> so it's funny that your favorite character is Egwene. Um, I'd like to think what you think of my favorite character. So uh, my favorite character is actually Gowan. I love him. Yeah, he's the, got the purest heart of everyone in the whole whole fucking thing. He's, he, he's a bumbling idiot, but he's he's he is who he is, and he's not. He he doesn't uh, apologize for it. And actually, I I actually have a gallon tattoo right there. Like, oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he's he's one of the most hated characters in the entire fandom. Everybody seems to hate him and Fael, and they're two of my favorite characters. I don't. I would never hate Fael. Or him. That's so crazy. I mean, he, he indirectly caused Egwene's death, so there is that, but <laughs> that's 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 fair. That's yeah, fair. Pe people get a little upset about it. But I mean, he's when when I was younger, I identified with him a lot because he was a bit of an idiot, very emotional, very hot headed, but that's was me to a T. Um and I think I think most of the characters are in their teens and he's definitely in his late teens in the in the book series so he's he's written well because he's written like a late teenage boy especially one grown up in privilege for sure so yeah he just had a lot of bad a lot of bad information like his the found he he had to like he had to learn that he had to break his whole foundation you know that like everything that he'd based his entire existence on and his future on that all of that was you know he had to break it all and 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 that's a that's a hard thing to uh, that's a hard thing to overcome and yeah. but he did in the end i guess he never oh. meant him. i liked him oh my God. <laughs> hopefully we'll find out who plays him Why soon in the show i don't understand oh, that pe either. people hate her because they they don't like the way she treats perrin and they think the relationship is a bit toxic um, and I'm sure folks that are watching in the comments, you're going to let us, let us know in great detail why you hate Fael and Gowan. Cause you usually do, uh, with colorful language. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no people, people don't like her because she was not the nicest, but I thought she was strong. I thought she was firm and I thought she was exactly what Perrin needed and Perrin was what yeah. she needed. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. I've, I hated that they, that there was a whole book dedicated to the two of them. That was annoying for me. That was, yeah. I would. That was that was that's always hard to get through. Actually, my most recent read through, it was the it wasn't as hard as it's been in the past. But well, the, there's a lot of people I think, and and people are probably going to correct me on this. I'm sure, but uh, a lot of people on their first read, they they get to that section of the book where she's captured and parents trying to save her, and it's just so long and so drawn out. 
and they want to hear from Matt, they want to hear from Rand, they want to see Tam, they want to see they want to see all these other characters, and it just they're kind of not they're there, but they're not not as in depth or as much as people want, and people get very upset, and I think they're just blaming the characters. That's what I'm that's what I'm telling you, folks. You're blaming Fael because you're too impatient. That's <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. You know what, though? What I think is really cool is in, is it, is it, is it Dragon Reborn that we barely see Rand, but when he, until like the end when, but he's just like there doing amazing shit in the background the whole time. Yeah. He, yeah. so there's a few chapters for him. That's where he gets real dark real quick. I think that's where he. Or is that the uh, box one? No, that that's much later on. But like this is where he he's not there very much. But we we see him a few scenes from here and there where he he beheads a bunch of people. He lines them all up. He beheads them. He, he he's killing women at that point. When later on he really doesn't like doing that. He's not yeah. really the character that we see much later. I think yeah. Jordan at that point took him too dark too quick, and then kind of the next book was like, well, that didn't happen, and <laughs> and he and he kind of kind of pulled him back a bit. But yeah, like he he was there for a bit. But uh, that book was pretty parent heavy if i remember correctly and there was uh very little moraine and land in that one too um, yeah so so yeah no really 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 fantastic characters um now we're gonna talk about scenes scenes in the books uh there's there's always everybody always seems to have one or two favorite scenes if you had to pick a scene from the book series what, what would be your favorite um uh I mean, I guess I, I if you want know. if you want a second to think, I can let you know what mine is. Yeah, um, let's hear what you're So mine was The Eye of the World, the very first book, when Rand fell into the Royal Gardens and he met Elaine, Gowan, and Glad for the first time. Yeah. And then and then he seen Morghais and uh, Elida walked up to Rand and pulled his sword out a bit. And you saw the hair and everybody in the room was ready to die. I, I was nine years old reading that. And I got goosebumps. I'm like, this this is cool as shit. And I'm, I'm in my 40s now. And I still read it and go, this is cool as shit. Every single time. That's my favorite scene ever. It wasn't in the show, obviously, which is a bit unfortunate. I was a little upset for that. But hoping to see some variation of it in the future. But uh, yeah, no, that's 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 my favorite. It's not the big battles like Dumai's Wells or the Last Battle or even the Battle for the White Tower with the Sean Chan. None of that. Right. They're cool, but my favorite was that one little scene with Rand. And I don't like yeah. Rand that much, which is odd. Oh, <laughs> you love Rand. Um, I don't know. I loved. Um, I loved the the. Um, I found the, all the stuff that happened um, in Eelway. Is that what it is? No, they, when when they go and they meet the Eelfin and the Eelfin. And oh, the yes. Yeah. People and, you know, where uh, Matt gets hung by the tree and all of that. Like, I really enjoyed all of that. I don't I don't I don't know. I've really never thought about a favorite um Seen in the books, um, but I do love everything that happens beyond there because it's so different than anything else in the books. Yeah, um, and it it was it's it's honestly the only parts in the books where I felt like I had to read the 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 passages more than once because I didn't quite understand the riddle that they were throwing at us. It felt mm -hmm. like there was more going on than what was just on the page um so that i love the idea of um this is so stupid but i love the idea of elaine in the circus you know when she had the tight pants on she was doing the tight, whatever that stuff was like that was so silly that's, and so that's stupid. not stupid at all it's awesome i've actually i've actually petitioned rafe judkins a couple of different times um, to cast Valen Luca as Bruce Campbell. I, I, I don't oh. think it'll ever happen, but I think Bruce <laughs> Campbell will be the perfect Valen Luca. Perfect, like he's in my mind, he's perfect, shmarmy uh, and shitty yeah. and just awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I love, I love that. Um, I, I already mentioned the, the scene, you know, uh, where Gwen's like at the end where she's at the top and she's just being mm -hmm. amazing. Like, I love that. I love that scene. It like, 
she was not my favorite character until that moment, you know, mm-hmm. like I think until that moment, honestly, I probably loved Matt. Like I just loved his. Every, stupid, everybody loves Matt. He's so, he's so fun. He's so fun. He just makes the worst decisions and he causes so much <laughs> trouble, but he is just so fun. Um, really missed the mark with that one in this series, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully this, the, the next actor takes, takes it up a bit. Um, there's a bit of a story there with, with Bernie Harris who plays Matt. Uh, he only made it through the first six episodes before he quit. So he sort of, he sort of walked away and there's all kinds of rumors. No, why he quit? Do, do you have any, are you allowed to tell me? Do you want to like text it to me? Oh, I'll tell you later. How does that sound? <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, Officially, there's all kinds of rumors, but nobody's commented on why he left. And when he left, they had to rewrite episodes seven and eight, and it caused a lot of problems. Um, mm-hmm. And now we have uh, Donald Finn. He's a, he's an Irish actor. He's going to be playing Matt for the second season and, and hopefully beyond. I mean, the, the running gag is they're going to recast Matt every single season, which, I mean, it would be kind of funny at this point. No, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, the, he wasn't... Uh, he was... He did. He played Dark Matt very well. I, I will give him that. He did have a few one-liners, but they were really out of place. It was, um, it was a little weird. So, like, let, let's shift gear now to the show since we're talking about it anyway. Um, but what did what did you think overall of the first season? Like, what were you happy? Were you? Um, I, I am. I don't know how I feel about it. I didn't hate it. I didn't mm-hmm. fall in love with it. I think they did a really good job with the overall production, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, there are things that I loved and things that I hated. I, things that I loved were, um, right off. I loved that they included women as being Tavarin, like such a yep. no brainer, like that makes sense. I'm down for it. Um, and uh and why wouldn't have Egwene and Nynaeve been oh and they, they basically and, and I'm gonna get some 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 hate from the book cloaks for this uh there are people who think that the books are all and and, and pure and, and they can't be changed in any way shape or form which is to me a little silly but uh uh they kind of were Taverin in the books anyway I mean realistically they 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 altered the pattern to suit their own okay. needs a whole yeah, lot they... like, mm-hmm. like when Nynaeve yeah. got rid of her block uh, that was very fortunate that land just happened to be there to pull her out of the water so she she didn't drown um yeah. the, the chance meetings with gallon with with Egwene and then bonding him later on there were all all kinds of little things that yeah. happened by extreme chance that just seemed like Tavern twitching the pattern a bit so i know officially yeah. they never were but in my mind they always were 100 percent. it could have been and i loved it it added to the mystery of which one is the dragon reborn mm-hmm. which if you read the books you know that it's rand because yes yeah. like your 10 chapters hero. in you're like yeah it's rand it's it's yeah they, they did a poor it, job of hiding this <laughs> yeah and like if you if you're like the type of person who doesn't forget something when you immediately read it it's like Oh, well, this man literally just said that he's not your father in his deluded, delusioned, you know, like fevered yeah. state or whatever. Like we as the reader, we know it's Rand the whole time. I mean, unless, mm-hmm. unless you're really just not capable of putting clues, big clues together. Um, and and so they did a really good job in the in the TV series of giving them adding to the mystery and and i imagine I, that there are people who hadn't read the books who would actually be surprised that it was ruined because they did a lot of misleads which is mm-hmm. i think was the problem part of the problem with um barney barney's portrayal of the matt character it's like they told him that they wanted to have him be the, the biggest mislead which is fine you know i understand like like as a as a creator myself i give I give adapt I give adaptations so much room to make decisions mm-hmm. for their story to work because storytelling is really, really hard. And um so you know, I, I'm not as I'm not as like they have to stick to the books as long as they get like some major things right and they get the mm-hmm. soul of it right. Like giving the way that the books are now, we have a very 
complex background and starting point for Rand, the character. We do not get complex background starting points for character development for any other character in the show at, or in the book series whatsoever. No. On the show, they fixed that. They gave yes. yeah. everybody complex places to start from so that by the time they got to where their characters will be, we will have been we will have been able to track their journey just as well as we were able to track Rand's by reading the books. And, and so like the changes with Perrin, which in my opinion are probably the most shocking. Yes. Very very much. So the 10 minutes in and poor, poor Lila gets, gets one line and two minutes of screen time and, and ax to the gut. Yeah. But you know what? (laughs) Good, because mm. the truth is that will make Perrin's struggle against the wolf inside of him be so much greater to overcome. And when he finally overcomes it, we'll all be more proud of him and mm. more happy. And we will have seen that struggle and it will be bigger than just Perrin not wanting to be a wolf. Because mm. other than that, what is Perrin's struggle in the books for being a wolf he doesn't have one he's there it's just like boom you're a wolf Ooh, i hate it you know yeah that's the thing that i hated about matt was uh ruining his father like yes when when when, when abel was it was a was a, a like a, a womanizing kind of horrible shitty man. person yeah. i was just like well like, but in the books to be fair uh uh Abel Cawthon in the books is is Tam 2.0. He's he's pretty much just Tam with some small elements of Matt in him. So I I, I guess so changing him like I that, mm-hmm. yeah, changing I him like that kind, kind of makes sense because it, it differentiates him a bit on screen. And we know he's mm-hmm. not going to be in season two. There's rumors and talk of of, of both Christopher and Juliet reprising their roles as uh, Abel and 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 Natty Cawthon in season three. Well, we don't know for sure yet because they're just writing it right now and nobody really knows what's happening. Uh, although I haven't heard of any contracts being signed just yet. So maybe maybe we won't go back to the Two Rivers in Season 3 even though Perrin's storyline is supposed to be paramount there. I, I have no idea. But um, poor Natty. They did Natty dirty. She was uh, she was my mother. <laughs> That's a horrible thing to say. But she was, she was, she was just a drunk, terrible person in that show. But... It does give Matt a really good starting point for later on. People are going to understand why he likes uh, drinking and carousing, why he likes um, gambling, why he covets money so much, uh, at least for the first little bit, because he doesn't have that sort of thing. Uh, he goes through so many different women so quickly because he didn't have that in that that stability in his life. So I get why they did that, but I still didn't like seeing poor Natty in that, in, yeah. in that way. It made me a little sad. <laughs> It made me sad too. I, you know, but you're, I think that you're right about him just being Tam um, 2.0 and they don't, in terms of the show, they don't need two Tams no, and no. they need Tam. And so I guess, I guess they can sacrifice all. I love, we all have such different pronunciations. You're, <laughs> you're calling him Abel and I would call him Abel and mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, but to to be fair, I am the king of mispronouncing everything. So I still to this day mispronounce things that were pronounced properly on the show, um, and I get shit for it all the time for everyone out there. But they all know. People who watch my channel know at this point that uh, that, that I'm just terrible at pronouncing things. And, and don't use me as canon, please. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I I read the books. I I didn't didn't listen to the audiobooks until probably five years ago. I- I listened and, to them for the first time in the pandemic. That was what that was one of my pandemic things. Yeah. Um, and I, I did too, and that was because people were 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 getting mad at me. They're like, "You need to listen to the books to learn how to pronounce things." And I did. And well, they got some things wrong in the books. They I mean, they the, did, the, and they they weren't always consistent either. Um, no. So that was my complaint to them. It's like, well, they they were good, but they, I would. They, they, uh, listen, I mean, I would just practice. I always because when I whenever I was reading. Uh, the paper version. Now I'm just uh, now I'm on Kindle for big fantasy books, mm-hmm. but I would constantly be looking in the back at the index, and I would force myself to phonetically pronounce the name until I got it right. Um, 
In See, I was, ne- I was never that dedicated. I read it, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, it sounds like this, so we're going to go with that, and it stuck. So I said I for probably the first 50 or 50 rereads I did, in my mind, was Ace a Day, which was just, that's so wrong and terrible. Uh, and I think <laughs> I said it that way once in a video, and people are like, whoa, you need, you need some help. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I, I terribly mispronounce things all the time. Um, yeah. But yeah, so so the show the show itself eight episodes, um, they had some issues and some problems in the last couple episodes. Um, it, it it was it's a really good show. I loved it to pieces. I thought it was done really well. But like like you said, it's not perfect. Um, then again, the Eye of the World was was not a perfect book either. So I know I was on I was on board with everything. There were the the linking together healing thing that happened with Nynaeve in 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 the end of one of those episodes. I didn't like that at all. No. That's that was wrong for me. Like it, it, it's like they didn't understand how that power actually works, and that that I, that that was the first time that I was like, "Oh come on, guys, please don't do this." And then, and then, and then, and then, and at the very you know at the end and in, in the cave with the whatever happened, um, with whatever happened, I was just like, guys. Now, now I'm gonna have to question everything. Well, I, I didn't enjoy the way they handled the power and the linking, um, and I certainly didn't enjoy the the PlayStation Two graphic trollocks that were there. Um, not their fault; they ran out of budget at that point. Uh, they were supposed to use real actors, but because of COVID, they weren't allowed, um, and they had no money for VFX. So it was just like, well, we'll do what we can, and it ended up being like a PlayStation Two game was bad. Um, but I did enjoy the acting and the way they went through things. I, I'm hoping yeah. I'm hoping that um, come season two, when they get into the tower, they'll start explaining a bit because the, the wheel time is a very hard magic system, very, very specific rules. And it's one of the things I really liked about it um, in the show, of course, hard magic is very difficult to do on screen. Harry Potter was was an example of that. It was just a, you know, a, a kind of a soft magic system. Things weren't super explained. They just, they just kind of were. And I think they started to do that in the first season, but maybe they'll start to drift a bit. And maybe what we've seen in the first season was more of the unreliable narrator thing that we saw in the books a lot. I'm hoping, and we start to get rules and explanations. I have heard rumors that we will see actual colors for the flows in season two, which is nice. That makes me happy that we might see actual flows that are colored and they weave together instead of just all the generic type magic we saw in the first season. So there's, there's there's rumors of that now. I don't know how true that is, but I'm hoping it is. I I I will say I thought the acting was great, and mm-hmm. and honestly, I loved. Um, I kind of like I love the the Barney guys. I loved what he was doing. I thought he was great acting. Yeah, just he wrong was, for the character. Yeah. You know, it was like he took a note for a circumstance that that character was in and then disregarded everything about the actual character, the character traits of that mm-hmm. character. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm just going to focus on this one thing, not how a person who is all of these things would be acting when this mm-hmm. is happening to him, if that makes sense. No, 100%. Uh, it does make sense. I, I, and I, I get like that. his acting job i thought everyone did a really great job acting wise yeah, that's, that's not how roads work like he, he was good like, even even he had a couple of one-liners and they were great and and i liked his portrayal on the screen but like you said yeah he was very this one narrow vision of matt um mm-hmm. and i'm hoping they expand on that in, in the second season so if you had to pick one the... character from the show one character oh. from the show you loved who, who would it be just one and i'm from gonna make the... it even easier it can't can't be rosemond or daniel henny so it can't be moraine or land you can't pick those I wouldn't have picked either of them. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm gonna pick. Um, I'm gonna pick Nynaeve because she's a character that I hate in the books. I yes. hate her. Yeah. I, I I hate her so <laughs> much. Like I can't even like I just hate her. And 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 so I thought that for me to like the tv version of a character that i hate more than anything i thought those are really that that's like a good testament to that uh actress and to that yes. character so. zoe robbins did an absolutely phenomenal job playing nine like uh she, mm-hmm. she embodied 
the best parts of the character, in my opinion. And uh, the, the one or two braid tugs we got were placed really well, <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it, because people were watching for it. And, and I had a braid tug count ready to go, but, but I didn't end up using it in my videos because she only did it like a couple of times the whole season. But her, her portrayal of Nynaeve was perfect. Like I thought almost, almost damn near flawless. It was really, really good. Yeah, it was, it was, it was good. She was great. Um, so yeah, I, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I also thought that, uh, there was the, the one character, she was like a supporting character, the bar tavern woman who was working for the, working for the, whoever the, the, the dark, dark friends. friends. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dana, friends. the dark friend. She was awesome. Uh, she was really, really good awesome like such a standout performance um for a guest star like good for yeah, her she, one episode i mean she had, she had quite a few lines and stuff, but she was really good and the terminator run at the end chasing the boys just magnificent i loved it good for her <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah so um if you have to what would you like to see for the next season i guess i guess that's the next spot we'll go to what would you love to see in season two what, what, what would you have to see in season two to, to make you happy? Um, I guess. Um, uh, okay. So season book two is the great hunt. Yep. Which is in fun. season season two, just, you know, we'll incorporate aspects of the great hunt and the dragon are born. They're doing a little bit of both in there and amalgamating That's some things good. together. So. That's good. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm so easy. I'm so excited to to, to see um, uh, more of the um, more of uh, Loyal's people. Um, yes. Yeah. People, there, but like, I want to see a studying. You know. Yeah, I want to see a studying. I want to see the Ogier. I want to see Elder Hammond. If we can, it would be great. Uh, there's rumors that we we see him in season two, which would be fantastic. Um, oh, good. I I liked when when Loyal's images of Loyal first leaked, and they leaked prior to episode. I think he. I think he when he first showed up, um, it, it leaked two weeks prior to the episode that he was in, um, and people were not happy. People were very unhappy with the way he looked. They did, they, right. they expected something very different. Um, they wanted more CG. They wanted, I, I don't know. Um, but uh, Hammond Animashan, the guy who plays Loyal, fucking nailed it. He blew me away, and he he won over pretty much everybody who was upset with the way Loyal looked because he was so good at playing the character. He was perfect, and I I, I can't wait to see more of that yeah me too um i yeah i think it's gonna be great um i loved him definitely looking forward to more studying stuff i thought he really got mm -hmm. he got um he got the cadence in his voice i guess that i would have like when he started speaking i was like yeah this is it deep, this is deep rumbly bumblebee type it was perfect it was yeah, absolutely I was amazing like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you got him. i'm happy for this yeah it was great um loved that um um what am i looking forward to i can't I, like i want to get the i want them to get uh the scene in the in the dome when he gets calendar you know like i want that to be as epic as it is in the books um and and i and that's that that specific part you know where he's when they're all in the dome, when like the girls are in the dome and they're doing their thing and he's in the dome and they don't know that they're in the dome together. And so, but like, I, I love that so much. And especially in that book, there's so many, like, they're just ships in a night, you know, like don't mm -hmm. even know they're there. And I think that's cool. That scene is really awesome. I want that, that one to, I want that to be done. Right. I, I don't know. I guess I want them to um, make sense of the choices that they made in the end of the last episode. Why, why, yeah. how, why it's so different than the ending of the first book. I just yes, yeah. like, I don't want to make any, like I'm holding out judgment until we don't know why they did that or what they're planning to do, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I don't want to make any judgments about it. I didn't like it. I, it left me, confused and 
a little upset, but, um, you know, they might, they have a plan. So let's see what that plan is. So that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> fixing that. I'm also looking forward to meeting Elaine and I really don't want them to mess, yes. mess that up. And do so, we, need uh, just, do we need her in the third book. When does we meet? We meet Elaine in the first book, uh, and then she's around with with the girls in the second book, uh, and then she is in the third book as well. Uh, and we know the actress who's playing her. Um, Who? Yes. She she, she 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 is she's gorgeous and she's perfect. Um, so I, I actually leaked leaked the actress's role two months prior to them announcing it last year. That's why Amazon doesn't like you. That's part of the reason why I'm part of the reason. I, I leaked quite a few roles. Um, but uh, so C Sierra Coveney is her name uh, and she <laughs> is spot on perfect. So uh, part of my leaked video where I, where I talked about when she was leaked, I actually talked to some people that are on set acting with her at the time. And every one of them said exactly the same thing. She's perfect. She's poised. She's Elaine. She is 100% the proper daughter heir. Um, and one person went so far as to say that not a single other person on the show nailed their character as much as she did, which blows me away because they all did so well. And then if, if, if this person said that about her, then I can't wait to see her actually on the screen. So she does show up in, in episode one of the second season. So. Well, that's so very exciting. I'm excited. I'm excited about that. You yeah. know, like I, I totally, um, they're, um, they they got i think that they did a really good job um with casting rand you know yes. which yeah yosha's he, amazing he's he's perfect and i and i'm i'm you know like i like i understand the uh the the need and the quest for like a um inclusional world and in existence mm -hmm. and i'm here for it um i'm just glad that they made they gave rand that red hair like yes. I, I yep. wanted him to have the red hair. I wanted him to be like really tall. I just wanted him to be the Rand that I pictured in my head. And they, mm -hmm. and like in my heart, I was like, and it was like him and Elaine were the only ones that I was like, please just get these two kids. Like, I just want these two characters <laughs> to be how they are in my head. And I don't care about anybody else. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, oh, they did a really good job. Obviously they did a good job casting Moraine. She's flawless. Yeah. And R Roseman is great. She's, she's, she is, she starts a little slow, I guess, as Moraine. But later on in the series, I was I was on board. I think, I think yeah. in my episode one review, I, I I didn't enjoy her acting for episode one. But after that, I got I got on board. I I like Moraine episode two and beyond. <laughs> yeah, I um I thought well, she just like she nailed the uh, aesthetic for me in such yes. a in such a pleasing way that um I, I was she already had a, a pass and I already know she's a fantastic actor and I knew that she was taking the role seriously and reading the books and and um so that gave me confidence that she was going to like try to honor the character um and I was happy for that I was so surprised they didn't start with new spring like how dare they I I, I was shocked they didn't showcase some things from there, but they they did incorporate elements. Of, so Kareen was there. She 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 obviously dies. I think uh, episode I can't remember now uh, four. I think she dies in episode four in the show. Uh, but she was she died off page New Spring. So there were small little elements that they took that um, were were small parts of New Spring, small parts of the books, and they wove them into the show. And so uh, you're story. like oh. You're like I I know that I I know that, but it's not how it happened in the books, obviously. But it was it was little Easter eggs for the fans, which was kind of neat. I guess they could accomplish everything. They could pull the, the the only information that you really need to know from New Spring is the relationship between her and Swan, and the fact that and, she was in the room when the prophecy was foretold. Yeah. And they did a really good job with that in the show when when they went and and uh, Roseman and, and Sophie were together. I I love those scenes. I thought they were really powerful oh, and really great. Too. I thought it was perfect. So oh, wonderful. Just absolutely great. And props to uh, the producers for not shying away from mm -hmm. what Pillow Friends actually is. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. And the people wow. argued about it, but Robert Jordan was was on record. And he says, no, he said Literally they- on the page, yeah. Yeah, he said that that's, that's what he meant by that saying. And and I'm, I'm happy they showcased it in the show. I really am. Yeah, me too. 
Yeah. So I don't want to keep you very much longer. I've already had you for, for quite quite a bit here. Uh, any final thoughts for, for the folks out there on, on the show or the books? Anything you want to leave them with? Um, I guess uh, I, I just, I love, I've loved these uh, books for 20 years, over 20 years, 20 something years. And it's been really wonderful to find a community online that feels the same way. And I don't often participate in the, like in the online, um, back and forth in the community, but I'm always watching yeah. and I'm always reading and I'm always right there with everybody, <laughs> even <laughs> if I don't say anything. And it, it just makes me really happy to have so many other Wheel of Time fans who are passionate mm -hmm. about it the way that I am. So I just wanted to thank everyone for their uh, contribution to making my time on the internet actually enjoyable. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for, for for stopping by on the channel today. I really do appreciate it, and I know you have a very busy schedule. And it was it was a, it was a, a real treat to have you here. And I, I think I said it off camera at first, but I'm a huge fan, fangirled a whole lot before we even started this, and and I'm still still shaking a little bit. And it's really cool to be able to talk with you. Uh, I want to thank you once again, and uh, for everyone out there watching, thank you so much for sticking with the here to the very end. And uh, here's to many more.